I like the reds, it's the post-match pints. I'm looking at my phone because I'm still trying to work out what the rules are about Liverpool getting through. You got beat by Paris Saint-Germain, you know that. You got beat 2-1. You probably deserve to get beat 2-1. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but this is according to BT Sport. So put your complaints their way, not my way. Deep breath Liverpool fans, they said that, not us. Uh, if Liverpool beat Napoli at Anfield 1-0, they go through. If Liverpool win 2-1, they go out on away goals. And if Liverpool win by two goals or more, they're through. Sounds. Piece of piss. So, there you go. Kev Walsh says it's a piece of piss. <laughs> Ian Ryan, what do you think? Uh, the second in Serie A, they beat us away. They're not mugs. They're not mugs. Italian team, managed by Carlo Ancelotti. I don't see it being easy, but to be honest, mate, we have to play a hell of a lot better than we did tonight because that was that was poor tonight. And I, Kevin, I was chatting off there before. I think second half, you see. Don't say that it does someone's head. Oh, does it? I couldn't give a fuck to be honest with you. <laughs> and it does, someone, it does someone else's head in that you're drinking a bottle. Does someone else's head in that I haven't even got a drink? So let's get it all out the way. Eh? <laughs> well, on, to be fair, mate. I mean, you start the start of the game's not great, and I think you can look at the lineup he's picked tonight and. I can see why the manager's gone with that midfield three because he, he trusts them and they've, they've done a good turn in the past. I mean, they, they play in the first game against PSG and do well. My issue with it is that midfield's not set up for when you go a goal behind. If you go a goal behind, all of a sudden, you're looking at that midfield and thinking, where's the creativity? Who's going to run with the ball? Who's going to be comfortable enough putting the foot on the ball and spraying it round? It doesn't really be fit any of them, to be honest with you. And I thought that's where we really struggled. You see the first goal, it's a simple kind of one-two, really. Gets in past Henderson, and then they're on to the back four. Don't get me wrong, the back four don't cover themselves in glory. I think Van Dijk could probably do better. Lovren's kind of caught on his heels a little bit, and then there's nothing the goal he can do. And from there, we're really, so really the struggling. Fraction. Yeah, the it's, it's a little bit of luck. Yeah, there's a li yeah, maybe, but we're not great there at all. And oh. the first 20 were ragged, to be honest yeah, with you. And, and, and they look really, really good. And you can only see one winner. As I said before, second half, we're a bit better. First 10-15, we look like we might get back into the game, but when you look at our record this season in the Champions League away from home, it's three defeats now, yeah. and it's five shots on target. That's just not good enough. I mean, what Ian's talking about the midfield, so let's do the midfield. You either want it to be able to stop or create, or, or ideally both. Right. And, it, and, it, and it doesn't do either, really, does it? It doesn't first half, but second half, it does the same midfield, basically, it does the same job, the, the job that you want it to do. So first half, listen, you're playing a team against PSG, they're fucking yeah, back they're, and back. Back. Yeah. they're brilliant. They get the ball, they and cut... And speed's unbelievable. Well, not just him, look, the speed of thought from all of us, yeah, from yeah. Van right the way through. But it's one touch football, and it's, it's literally little passes, and it, it, it cuts you open to death. Now, fair play, we don't cover ourselves in glory. By the same time, I thought we covered quite well. At the end of the first half, obviously, we were looking to get the pen. Well, not lucky, but getting the pen when we did set all the stand. I thought second half was played really well. I don't, I, again, Without really creating anything. That, that, that's, that's my issue. Again, you put, but again, we're not really creating anything, possibly. But you, don't you have a shot on target. Yeah, but the thing is, you put, we're, we're, we're getting further up the pitch, we're getting into dangerous yeah. position. And what, you get, what you're facing there is a bank of four with another bank of four directly in front of it because we are 2 0 down. Now, listen, that's our own fault because we fucked it up in the first half. Or 2 1 down, sorry. But well, they take it, don't they, to an extent? Exactly. They go. And they you, make know, the, you look at the subs and everything else. Well, they make the game scrappy. Yeah. It's every the referee's given all sorts of daft fouls and yellow cards and whatnot. But the thing is, we, we still. Second half, I think there was a lot of positives to say, Tommy. Listen, the first half was terrible, but you can, you can write that off. And second half, I thought. Listen, if, if we'd got an equaliser, I don't think it'd have been understated, undeserved. But it's, so I think that, that tells, us, tells the story of the game in itself. I think. It annoys me a little bit in that, you know, I, I take Kev's point in that, you know, you're playing a side with superstars who are on, you know, unbelievable money. You paid unbelievable money to get them at the club in the first place, etc., etc. The good at home and all that kind of stuff. But I can kind of take it a little bit more if they'd absolutely blown us away and they did a bit first half early on. But then the fact that, I mean, maybe they were just toying with us and they let us have the ball and go, go ahead then and we can actually break them down and create something. But I don't know. Just only getting beat by 2-1, it's a little bit annoying, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's harder to take if you like. And I don't really get this. I didn't really like, it might have even been Kev saying this. Loads of people on the Anvil app were saying it though about this sort of, it's a free pass and all that. I don't really like that because... That. You did say that. I don't really like that because I just think it's still a Champions League, it's still a big game, it's still psychologically something. You've still got a load of reds who went out there, including loads of people from the Anvil app. 
you know, they want to see something, and, and they've come away, as you say, third defeat in a row, so they don't want to sort of polish the third too much and say, oh, it's sound, because it's not that sound that we've got to beat. We've done the fucking permutations, let's not do it again. No, but can't. you know what I mean? That we've got to beat Napoli last game. Okay, yeah. everyone's talking about Olympiacos already and all yeah. that, but the reason Olympiacos was so good is because the odds were against us a little bit, particularly you know as the game went on, and yet it was brilliant to do it that way. But you don't want to leave yourself in this situation, do you? No, I mean, Ideally. if there's any club that can, can do something special on a European night, it's us. And we know that, we've seen enough of them in the past. So there's every chance when Napoli comes to Anfield, we're scared of life, Aaron. I mean, we, 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 we may end up going through, but an Italian team needing need a point, the point. and Chirotti, and they have them well drilled. I don't think it'll be a walk in the park, but we have got the players who, if we're on our A game, we can cause any team in yeah. Europe problems. So, There's so, flashes from Marnie tonight, wasn't no, he? I, I, he's probably the only one for me who, from even in the start of the game, I mean, he gets us back into it with that little run, and it's a definite penalty. I mean, the referee was a disgrace, by the way. He wasn't oh, even going to give a penalty. He gave a corner. 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 The referee's out of his fucking mind, honestly. And, and it was the linesman on the, on the far side who seems to give the pen. Playing them is not enjoyable. I mean, I take Kev's point before, and even though we've had a, we, we've had a really good defensive record this season, but when a team can play that quickly, and it's one touch, and it's so fast, and They've got players who are so quick, with and without the ball, and you see for the goal where Lovren's kind of almost level with Mbappe, and within like two it's or three seconds, he's 20, 30 yards ahead of him, and he just can't get near him. But then the other side of the game is, they go down any time you go fucking near them. They're, they're playing for fouls, they're playing for free kicks, they're playing for trying to get penalties, trying to get lads sent off. When in reality, you look at the fucking Verratti challenge on Joe off. Gomez. Should they, should be be, they should be down to ten men. Yeah, they should be off. And the referee's fucking bottled it. Um, it's a leg it's, you know, it's a leg yeah, breaker. Yeah, and you know, for all we can talk about Liverpool were poor in the first half, and they really were. If the referee gets that decision right, it could have been a different game. Who knows? If we do, if we do individuals, Kev, uh, the, the midfield, I, I would say I don't know if you agree that probably Milner's the one who's the best of the three. Um, the other two, I mean, Van Alden gets a, a yellow and then is then walking on eggshells a little bit. It was 15 minutes in, wasn't he? Got that. So yeah. I, I immediately thought he's fucked here because yeah. it, they were going down with every single opportunity. So that's also ruined this game. Plus, he's. Is he about Kaiser on area? Yeah. yeah, because I, I think he, t- a game for him, a game like that is for him, maybe at half time or whatever. When you, but getting the goal up so late on, it changes your whole view of the game, doesn't it? Because you think. Well, do we still go for it like I was going to with 2 0 down, or if we go for it, we can see the third. So the permutations are different for it. I thought Henson played all right, didn't they? Second half again, I thought they all played all right. Second half, I didn't think any of them done anything particularly bad. Henderson was sometimes just a little bit sloppy in possession, a little bit hitting hope with some of the passes. But in the first half, he put that one over, right over the top onto Manny's foot, which is fucking hell of Manny, they've got a touch on that. It's a great goal and it's a wonderful assist, isn't it? So the midfield, yeah, I'd say. Hit and miss. The defence was definitely hit and miss. I'd say Gomez and Robertson played really well, but the two centre halves both at the moment. Like the clearance of Van Dijk for the second goal. What happened there? Such a bizarre. I don't, I don't know. And Robertson doesn't give himself in glory either for another one later on. But listen, they, they happened. I the, thought the goal he was excellent. He was brilliant. Absolutely spot it's on. Back to that thing though, wasn't it? Where when and I mean I'm, I'm not defending the defence at all because I think there was times where we look we look really poor. We even saw when Leon played City. When there's teams who've got a lad with so much ability and they move it so quickly and they're willing to run at defenders, it does cause most teams problems. You know, yeah. if you're isolating lads and you've got such pace, it's hard to defend against. I mean, there was times there, second half, where you are carrying out for that sub a little bit early because I don't think Naby was like amazing when he came on, but there was a little couple of times where he just picked the ball up and run at them. And they look panic there because defenders just don't want lads to ever run at them. And I don't think. If you look at our midfield, there's no one really in that midfield that starts, that's capable of picking the ball up and, and, and driving at someone. You know, like Chamberlain would do if he was there, no one's driving at anyone. And I think the manager's got options on the bench. He waits too long for me. For security. I, I, I just think for both. I think I, I probably would have done one out of half time because the problem you've got, he's booked so early on, he can't make a fucking tackle. Mm. He can't make a challenge because he knows if he does, he's probably walking. So I'd have made that one at half time. And he I probably the... would have gone security on about, with about half an hour to go. I think he does it with about 20, 15 to go. Doesn't really give him enough time. I'd say, yeah, you know, I want to say about Wayne Alden is he is walking the title, so he can't really tackle, but he is one of them players who doesn't slide in ever. He, he, it, his tackle is to run at the player and tangle and come out with the ball. So 
Dyke doesn't get the yellow card, it's probably slightly reduced it for him. And also, he's the one who recycles possession best out of all three of them, where it's Henson and Milner. I'd have, him, I'd have him on the ball, Ed Wall. I'm not saying something when you think about how good Milner is on the ball himself. He's a, he, he, can get, he can take the touch, cross field passes, he was he done a load of them tonight, but fucking hell, he'd take a while to come down, don't he? Mm. But oh, I mean, Mister, you can, you're not hitting anyone, are you? But you're you're, you're, you're not, no, that, but that's what I mean. Whereas with Wijnaldum, I think his vision is a, is a lot more direct, so I think that's probably why he's kept them on there. But Milner's obviously a little bit more industrious for that. I'd say. Yeah, it, the point we're making, I think, is the same point everyone's been making since fucking I don't know how long this season. It's the player that takes the two pivots. It's the one who sits in front of them, yeah. just behind the front yeah. three. That, that's the point we need. And I think Kate's coming around. You say didn't you know what? I thought he did okay. I thought he had a few little, little, little turns and little sticks where he did have the idea in his head to get round the man yeah. and for his oh, next pass oh, to be oh, a ten oh, yard bit of So I think that again, that's one of the points I took. He burst forward in one corner, didn't he? At one point, I remember that. I know. was going to say on that. I mean, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean not having a go with Keita at all. I actually thought when he come on, he demonstrates that if you do run at someone, you can cause some problems. And he kind of showed what we were missing a little bit. But I don't think he's on long enough really to influence the game in any, in any great kind of detail. Because we have that little spell after half time where we look good, but then it kind of pieces out. And some of that's probably because they're going down, they're making subs, and it takes that kind of momentum off the game a yeah. little bit. And then you kind of, I don't know, it was just, we're blowing, we're blowing, we're blowing, think, but we never thing, we're going to crack them open. I think the other thing that was disappointing for me a little bit was that, you know, the other day when Sen scores that free kick, we were talking about that and we were like, you know, it's brilliant to have someone on your team who can deliver a quality set piece. And then you watch it tonight, and we hardly did it. There, was, there wasn't a quality set piece probably all night, there, really. There was one, because there was the one where Shakiri stood over the ball 20, 25 yards out or whatever, and Henderson flipped it over. But did um, Thiago Silva dive, didn't he, when Van Dijk had it? Because Lovren won, yeah, to get it back across, but the ref, the ref, he had already blown the whistle. So, yeah, that, that's only what, that is literally that one wrong. thing I'm pulling through. Yeah. So, I, I would agree with you. But again, we didn't get that many three kicks in danger positions for the direct shot, weren't really there. And when you're battling against the defensive, Thiago Silva, and it was Marshall, and the rest of them, listen to some giants in there, obviously, for that, only a fucking midget, but the rest of them are giant enormous, aren't they? So, you're going to struggle with that. Three kicks, if we're depending, what I'm trying to say is we're depending on three kicks and fuck the right thing. Yeah. We do, if our game is not about that, our game is about quick passing in the midfield and getting it through the little gaps that they leave. And you are talking little tiny gaps in these games, but that's the difference maker with the man behind the front three makes. If it is Kite and he does get it right, that little turn and his immediate vision, where he's going left or he's going right, and he's putting a ball to the eye of a needle for someone to run to, that's where we'll win the European Cup this year. We won't win it by three kicks because it's just not our game. Next then, uh, we all know what's next, it's the derby, um, I'm sure there's a lot of gleeful Evertonians doing the thing that Evertonians do and looking at PSG beating Liverpool and saying, oh well we can do that, <laughs> uh, I mean they haven't got ne Neymar and Mbappe obviously for a start and they haven't won at Anfield since 1999, so <laughs> are you worried about the effect of that on Sunday or are you like, it's Everton? I'm not worried, uh, you know what Rob, it can't come quick enough. I'd play tonight, honestly. I'd fucking play tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'm, fucking, I'm, tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. Honestly, me. it can't come quick enough. When he lost the game like that, and you know, it hurts now, and the players are be suffering a little bit, and I think they'll know they haven't given, they haven't kind of given a performance there that you know they're capable of. So I think it will be hurting, it'll be hurting the manager, but what a game on the horizon to put it right. You put it right on Sunday by beating them fucking lot and putting them back in the fucking place, so I can't wait for it. It still feels, don't it, Kev, like, I mean, you know, we in the league anyway, I mean, the, the European results, as Ian said before, you know, beating, losing three away is not ideal in anyone's book, but in the league, we, we're flying, we're doing well, and yet, nevertheless, it still kind of feels like we need something big somewhere to get everyone going, do you know what I mean? And like, the moment the season big, turns on, a big, big win on Sunday would be boss, wouldn't it? <laughs> don't, don't you get me excited? <laughs> I'm listening, I, I've, been, I've been fucking, I hate Everton, obviously, but I can't, I, I don't really have to any, I don't really have to any surprise to anyone, but I've never done like a preview show for one either, so I don't want to look fucking stupid on my first one, where we end up getting this done, where they, where they beat us. But as you said before, the point is, you've got to enjoy it while you can. 20 years since they beat Sir and listen, they're going around now saying that they're midfield, that's in their midfield. You probably watched that tonight and thought, yeah, Gomez, Gay, and whoever else, they have a mere Sigurdsson, would the boss that. They're not in the same, they don't play the same fucking game as our midfield, and on Sunday, I think our midfield will prove that. And once our midfield, once we get that control over the game and we do dictate the pace, 
that's the difference maker. Because tonight we can't dictate the pace because we're playing against the better team in the own backyard. Sunday, if Everton come with the confidence that they're full of, and this and they are full of it at the moment, we'll be carved at the weekend one fucking nil. That's shite. Do you know what I mean? That's a, a good result. That's a crap. So if, we, if they come with that, and I'll, if they even attempt to play an open game, I think we'll absolutely trump them. If they listen, but Silver's a good manager. He's got, he's got a tackle side to him. If he does sit in, he could get something, because anyone can get something. But I just open play that he's got the same stupid misplaced confidence the rest of them have. And he comes and plays a little bit of an open game when we show most football really he played. That's right. Uh, and finally, obviously the Napoli game, then it, it, all, it all hinges on that. I mean... I think we're right to say what we said earlier in that they're no mugs, the manager's no mug, it'll be tough and all the rest of it. We don't know how it's going to go, obviously we don't know what kind of challenge they'll offer on the night and all that kind of thing. But what we do know, we can say with certainty, is that it will be booming in the Absolutely. ground. Because everyone, we know, and we're all right to say this, this isn't arrogance, this is experience as, as people who've gone the match for a long, long time. We know that we can get up for these European yeah. nights and it's going to be magical before the ball's kicked against Napoli, isn't it? And, and, they, and they need to prepare themselves for that. I know I know they, they, they do it themselves to an extent and all that sort of thing, but Anfield on a European night is still special and it's been special on the clock quite a few times as well. Absolutely, and I think, you know, we, we've heard it before from opposing players where they'll come out and say, well, we've played in boss atmospheres, we know what great atmospheres are all like. We've seen it before, Chelsea players, City players, you know, other, other foreign clubs who think they've played in atmospheres that are intimidating. But when it comes to playing on Anfield, when it hits them as they're coming into that crowd, it really hits them. And sometimes it's too big for certain players and they crumble under it and the pressure gets to them. And if Liverpool get a goal ahead, early doors, you can see them really kind of turn the screw. And maybe beating Napoli by two or three, but it's all about the start for me. It's all about the mentality. And I think, you know, tonight you see we start slow and you get punished for it. Yeah. Especially at this level, you know, European players, some of these teams, you know, you don't get second chances. So the manager will be drumming into them now. In that Napoli game, crowd up for it, players up for it. But when those chances come, you've got to be clinical, you've got to take them. Absolutely. Well, we'll be there all the way. Um, Napoli, the derby, we'll be doing before, after, draw, and all the Anfield app stuff that there always is podcast video write it on the site theanfieldapp.com if you fancy subscribing get along to the site go to the subscribe page give it a go five pound a month and as i say read the stuff on there get on all the social media channels as well there's loads of stuff on there from all the lads who are over in paris should have been watching that all day it's been great uh, this has been the post-match pint thanks to the boys hopefully next time we do one we're talking about a little bit of victory up the fucking reds